chickens. If you grow your own, you might have a stack of them of various sizes somewhere around the house or barring that out in the shed or your garage. And if you don't grow them, you will definitely see them appear in supermarkets and farmers markets from around the end of September right through the holidays. And indeed, a lot of people think of pumpkins as decorations. And then secondly, as food, and you can make some incredible dishes. So everything from pumpkin soup to casseroles and curries, and of course the iconic pumpkin pie. But one of the main ideas in my book, A Woman's Garden, Grow Beautiful Plants and Make Useful Things, is that a lot of plants have multiple purposes. And that yes, we can use pumpkins as decorations and we can use them to make delicious meals, but we can also use them in maybe more creative ways as well. And one use for pumpkins is to naturally color handmade soap. There is an entire section in the book on using plants and fruits and vegetables to naturally color. So everything from wool and fibers to natural food colors, to a section on natural soap colorants. And so I want to share with you today how to use real pumpkin to make this gorgeous yellow to orange, completely natural handmade soap from scratch. Let's go through the ingredients that you'll need to make handmade pumpkin soap. All of the ingredient amounts are in a printable recipe on my website. The link will be in the video description. Pumpkin puree, probably the most important ingredient with making pumpkin soap. You also will need distilled water, sodium hydroxide, you will need shea butter and coconut oil, and you will also need the liquid oils, castor oil and olive oil. Extras include essential oil, although that is optional, and pumpkin seeds for decoration. The first step in making pumpkin soap is to start with a pumpkin. Of course, and it doesn't matter what type it is or if it's even a squash, you can make this recipe with butternut squash. This beast is a cross between a pumpkin and a courgette. It's uh, what I affectionately call a pumpkini. I wouldn't use this to make handmade soap because the flesh is a little bit too light colored. You want to work with a pumpkin or squash that has really golden or deep orange color because that color fades slightly in the soap. So your end bars will be a little bit lighter than that. And so if you start with a squash that has a really light colored flesh, you're not going to magically get orange soap at the end. So the color translates to a certain extent. So I'm going to put this down and I am instead going to begin this process with a really lovely pumpkin that I grew in the allotment this year, and it has a yellowy orange flesh. And what you need to do first when making this is to cook the pumpkin because you need a little bit of the pumpkin puree. And the easiest way that I've found to do this is to cut the pumpkin in half, scoop out the innards and the seeds, turn the pumpkin upside down on a baking tray and bake it for about half an hour at 180 Celsius. And then at the end, what you're left with are perfectly steamed pumpkins without any kind of coloration on the flesh. You can scoop it out easily and then use either your stick blender or a food processor 
to blend it into a puree. You could use a blender as well. And then reserve some of that pumpkin puree for this recipe. And then you can use the rest of the puree to make that soup or that pumpkin pie that you've been planning on making as well. When you're about to make soap, you need to ensure that you're working in a place that you're not going to be disturbed, that is perfectly clean and hygienic, and that all of your ingredients are pre-measured and your workstation is set out. This is the workstation for creating the lye solution. And I've got this set at the sink and by a window that I can open. I'm going to just nip down here first. I have my solid oils measured into the pan and ready to be warmed. The liquid oils are at hand. I also have the pumpkin puree ready to go. All of my tools over here for the first step. So the spatula, I've got the sieve, my thermometer here. I've got a, a rag here for spills. And then in the middle, I have my stick blender ready to go. My mold is sitting out clean, dry, ready to go. And the final ingredients are sat here as well. So I've got my pumpkin seeds that I'm going to be decorating with and the essential oil. Just push that aside and we are ready to go. To make the lye solution, place your distilled water by the window if you're working inside and then pour the sodium hydroxide in and then give it a stir and keep your face away from it while you're doing this. So having the jug sitting on something is really helpful. And you might see a little bit of steam in the video, but there will be steam because this reaction of adding the sodium hydroxide to the water produces heat. This lye solution is quite hot and we need to bring it down to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you live in a cold climate, you could have it sat outside in a really safe place that animals and kids and yourself can't get into and accidentally tip over, or you can leave it by a window. What I like to do is put it into the sink with a little bit of water, and this helps to cool it down fairly quickly. With the lye solution cooling in the sink, we can pop our goggles on our head if they're a bit uncomfortable. Just remember that whenever you're working with the lye solution or the soap batter, after you've added it, you need to keep these on. And it's just easier to keep your gloves on as well. With the next step, we need to melt the solid oils, the shea butter and the coconut oil. So on a very low heat, just on your stove, just turn it on. I would say two or three, have your spatula at hand and move the oils around in the pan until they are liquid. And that is pretty much melted. I'm just going to take the pan off the heat and there are a few things that we need to do right now. First is checking the lye solutions temperature and we need that to be about 100 degrees roundabout. And if it's close to that, take the lye solution out of the water, just keep it at room temperature. We also need to preheat the oven and I'm preheating it to 170 Fahrenheit. Next, we need to add the liquid oils to the pan and castor oil is pretty sticky. So stir your oils together and then pour them straight into the pan and scrape that jug out as well because as I said, castor oil is sticky and you want to get as much of that oil as possible, every last drop if you can. The next ingredient to go in is the pumpkin puree and just scrape that into the pan as well. With puree, you tend to use about one to two tablespoons roundabouts. Measured to the gram is better because it is replacing some of the water. So you need to know exactly how much it's replacing. And I have another video that shows how to make soap 
with carrot puree and you also get a really lovely golden color with that. The pumpkin looks really chunky in the oil right now and that is completely normal, don't worry about that. And also the instructions in the principal recipe will tell you now to add the essential oils and that is a pumpkin spice blend in that recipe. And if you're not using essential oils or you're not using that particular blend, don't worry about that, ignore that step. But if you are, add it right now because spice-based essential oils can cause soap to seize and go very thick very quickly in the next steps. But what we also need to do is take the temperature and we're aiming for, again, about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which it is roundabout, matching the roundabout temperature of the lye solution. So it's time to go to the next step and make some handmade soap. So if you've taken your goggles off, put them back on. And the next step is adding the lye solution. And the easiest way to do this without adding air bubbles to your soap is to try to pass the lye solution through the sieve and onto the spatula or the stick blender or whatever you have in the oils at that point. And that just reduces the chance of air bubbles in your final bars. And the sieve will catch any undissolved bits that were in the jug as well. You also need to put this in in a very precise manner if you want to avoid air bubbles. So put it in at an angle like that and then burp it. So give it a little tap to release any air bubbles that were in the head of the stick blender. Hang on to the pan handle and stir in a figure eight is what I tend to do. Then bring the stick blender to the middle and pulse. And then stir and pulse. And you just keep doing this until the soap emulsifies and starts to thicken up. And you can see it has a, a lovely creamy yellow, yellowish orange color. We've reached medium trace and you can see that there's a pattern, so a drizzle pattern left on the surface of the soap once you take the stick blender head out. Just going to pop this aside. The essential oil, if you use the spice blend, is already in, but if you're using another type of essential oil that isn't spice-based, you could, at this point, add it in as well. Using a spoon really shows how thick it's getting now. And the soap will continue to get thick. So getting it into the mold when it hits this stage is really important if you don't want the soap to solidify in the pan. And so we've got our mold at the ready and I'm just going to pour the soap in. Now, once all of the soap is in the mold, give it a tap. I actually quite like that texture on the surface of the soap and that would create a really beautiful, just a natural, organic feeling texture. But if you want to create something that's a little bit more designed, you can use a spoon and just do some divots in. And then take your glove off at this point if you want. And you can just sprinkle some pumpkin seeds on. Try to get ones that are not broken like I just pulled off. <laughs> And think about where you want to cut the bars as well so that you don't accidentally 
cut through some of the seeds. It just looks much better if you can think about it that way. If you look closely, I've given myself space to make a cut between each bar and there are five bars there. And then that will give us bars that look very similar to what I showed you earlier. Now this needs to go into the oven next and this ensures that that color really deepens into a lovely orange yellow. It sounds insane to put handmade soap in the oven, but trust me, this is an advanced soap making technique called oven processing and leaving the soap in the oven for 30 minutes will help to deepen the color and it will also give a kind of a sheen, a really lovely texture to the bars when they're complete. Now, after that time is up, 30 minutes, I'm turning the oven off and leaving the soap inside to cool to room temperature. And so probably tomorrow morning, I'll take it out and then set it someplace to wait for a full 48 hours. So I wait 48 hours from the moment that I make the soap to cut it. And by doing that, you're really ensuring that the soap is relatively safe because 99% of the sodium hydroxide will have transformed into soap at that point. The next step is cutting that loaf into individual bars, ordinary kitchen knife, ordinary cutting board. And then after that, cure the soap for four weeks before you use it. Curing means spacing the bars out on wax paper, so kitchen paper, in a place that's out of direct sunlight, that's fairly consistent temperatures, so a room temperature is best, and make sure that lots of air is able to flow around those bars because curing is doing three things. And the first thing is allowing the excess water to evaporate from the bars. And the second thing is allowing any residual sodium hydroxide to convert into soap too. So we're finishing up the saponification process. The third reason that we wait the full four weeks is that during that month's time, the soap's crystalline structure fully forms and there's no speeding up that process. And what that means is that at the end of the four week period, the soap will be mild, the lather will be gorgeous. And if you use soap before then, it will not be as good. So wait your full four weeks and then at that point, you can use it, you can give it away as gifts, or if you are a commercial soap maker, you can sell it at that point as well. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make pumpkin soap from scratch. If you enjoyed this video, do check out my other soap making videos. I've got one for making a carrot soap using puree as well. I also have an eco-friendly soap recipe which uses no color, no scent, and there are a few others that you can discover here on Lovely Greens. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week for another video here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now.